So you are wondering what are the differences between the S22 Ultra and the S23 Ultra? Should you upgrade from this to this? Or if you don't have either of these, should you buy the S22 Ultra or should you buy the S23 Ultra? Keep watching if you want to know all those answers. When the S23 Ultra was first coming up to the surface, it seemed like a very incremental upgrade. And in a way it is, but it might be a way bigger upgrade than you think. Starting off with one of the biggest reasons people tend to buy phones, the battery. The battery in the S22 Ultra was good, but the battery in the S23 Ultra is miles better. Don't be fooled by the same old 5000 mAh battery. Due to the way more efficient chip in the S23 Ultra, it's able to stretch out the battery life significantly longer than the S22 Ultra. People are posting about their insane screen on times all over Reddit, Twitter, and YouTube. It's no question that the new battery in the S23 Ultra is a big step up from its predecessors. The S23 Ultra also has better power efficiency and can pretty easily get through two or three full days on a single charge. With that being said, it also does still have up to 45 watt wired fast charging through USB-C 3.0, 15 watt wireless charging speeds, and four and a half watt reverse wireless charging, which is basically when you are charging another phone by placing it on top. While not the fastest charging specs around, this is still pretty fast. And you can charge the phone from zero to 100 in about an hour. So with all that being said, moving on to the design, between the two, the design is almost identical. Except for the volume rockers and the power button, they are slightly lower on the S23 Ultra, which means if you are one-handing the phone, it's going to be easier to hit. On the S22 Ultra, even with my big hands, it could sometimes be a stretch to reach all the way up and adjust the volume, or even to put the phone asleep. So that's a little bit less of an issue now. Both have an aluminum frame and with a frosted glass back. But the S23 Ultra comes out on top, in my opinion, because of the more square design. To me, the S22 Ultra was just a bit less comfortable to hold and to use because of the rounded design and also the curved screen. The screen was heavily curved and that can sometimes be kind of a nuisance just accidentally hitting the screen and also skewing your viewing angles sometimes. The S23 Ultra is by no means too boxy, but it's got just enough curve to make it comfortable to hold. In the S23 Ultra, the curved screen has been dialed way back to an almost flat screen, but with just enough curve to give it the cool looks of a curved screen while still maintaining the practicality of a flat screen. When it comes to the cameras in the S23 Ultra, it has a 200 megapixel main camera versus a 108 megapixel camera on the S22 Ultra. The S23 Ultra also has a wider aperture on its main camera, which means it lets in a lot more light resulting in better low light performance. The front camera also went from 40 megapixels down to 12 megapixels, which is a downgrade, but I don't know, I guess Samsung knows what they're doing with that one. But the overall camera system and the S23 Ultra is a leap forward. The S23 Ultra is also heavier at 233 grams versus 228 grams. You wouldn't be able to notice this small of a difference, so that's not really an issue. The S23 Ultra also uses the new Gorilla Glass Victus 2, which is an upgrade from the S22 Ultra's Gorilla Glass Victus Plus. With Gorilla Glass Victus 2, in the new S23 Ultra. It has the same scratch resistance as the S22 Ultra, but with increased drop resistance. So if you're prone to dropping your phone a lot, then the S23 Ultra is definitely the way to go. Performance is also another area the S23 Ultra excels in. It's got the new Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 4 Galaxy which is an absolute monster when it comes to performance. The 4 Galaxy means the chip is optimized for this phone specifically, 
which allows it to clock higher than the regular chip that'll be used in other phones. With clock speeds of up to 3.3 gigahertz, there's not much you can do to push this phone to its limit. It's gonna handle even the most demanding games with ultra smooth performance. The S22 Ultra came in four storage configurations, 128, 256, 512, or one terabyte. With the S23 Ultra, there are only three storage configurations, starting off at 256 gigabytes and jumping up to 512 gigabytes and then one terabyte. You're gonna get the eight gigabytes of RAM with the base 256 gigabyte storage model, but it goes up to 12 gigabytes of RAM for both the 512 and the one terabyte. The 256 gigabyte version should be a good option for most. The higher storage capacity ones usually being for the ones who want to take a lot of 200 megapixel photos or record a lot of 8K video and keep that stored on the phone. Both devices have the same beautiful display. 120 Hertz LTPO technology, which allows it to lower the refresh rate whenever needed to save battery. They've both got the same resolution, 500 pixels per inch, and 1750 nits of peak brightness. The display is one of the areas in the phone that absolutely shines. Even though it's the same display, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. It's super bright, super sharp and ultra smooth. Colors just seem to pop out of the screen and the blacks are truly black, unlike LCD blacks, which kind of appear gray when viewed next to an actual OLED screen such as this one. The camera cutout is the same hole punch design. And while it's definitely there, I don't find it intrusive or getting in the way because it's so small in diameter. If you don't have either one of these phones, if you can afford it, get the S23 Ultra. But if you wanna save some money, you can find these on the used market for around $600 right now. So the S22 Ultra is also a great option for the money. If you have the S22 Ultra, should you upgrade to the S23 Ultra? Ultimately, that is going to depend on whether or not you want to spend the money to get the upgrades. If you think the upgrades that I mentioned in the video are worth whatever you will be paying to upgrade, then 100% go for it. You're not gonna be disappointed with this phone. It's an amazing phone. The two phones have some differences, but overall Samsung made some much needed improvements and played it very safe with this one. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.